You're watching Animal Planet. Uluru. It's also known as Ayers Rock. It's the living, spiritual heart of Australia. Fair smack dab in the middle of the continent and surrounded by the dry sand and brilliant colours of the red centre. I find it interesting how when we talk of destruction of rainforests, everyone gets really cranky and upset, and for good reason. But what about our desert? Here in Australia, we've got the greatest diversity of reptiles in the world. We've also got the worst mammalian extinction rate. Over 50% of our small desert-dwelling mammals are gone forever. On this adventure, we're going to take you as far as my four-wheel drive will go, and some. Australia. There's no other habitat like it on Earth, and it's full of strictly Australian wildlife. Very unique wildlife. Things like the devil, bilbies, kawaris, fear snakes, and other venomous snakes. It's a remote place. It doesn't get any more remote, so we're going to have to be completely self-sufficient. We're going as far as we can by four-wheel drive, and the rest by four-wheel motorbike. There's no other access. Woo, let's go. Our journey to the Red Center takes us through some of the most inhospitable land on Earth. Yet we are about to discover just how much life there is hidden in the barren sands and sparse vegetation. The deeper we penetrate west, we get off the double-lane bitumen highway, onto a single lane bitumen highway and then the next step is onto a dirt road and then off the dirt road onto two wheel tracks and then we can't go any further onto the motorbike. And like every road we ever travel, we're on the lookout for wildlife. Spotted Black's member of the Black Snake family. They can be shiny black, or well, this one's actually got some spots on him. Beautiful snake. They hunt at day and during the night. Right. Do you see that? Another coat of paint, he would have tagged him. Trying to save your life, young fella. Notice the way he's flattening out like a cobra. Normally, they're pretty shy, non-aggressive, get out of your way real quick. But when they're cornered or confronted, they'll hit, and they'll hit hard. And having black snake venom means you're going to get gangrene, you're going to rot. You see, when he launches out at me, flattens his head out, just like a cobra. Just like a cobra does. Wait. These are really wild snakes. They'll eat virtually anything, including other snakes. They've been known to be cannibalistic, feeding on smaller spotted black snakes. Normally the spotted black comes as a black coloration. This is a beautiful color. Look at him with his spots. Gorgeous color. Really pretty. Oh, he's grumpy. Did you see the way he bit that piece of dirt? He'd like to bite me. And you have enough venom, 
to not only cause me gangrene and necrosis, but kill me if I never got medical attention. They're also known as a blue belly black snake. You can see along his belly there, how he gets that name blue belly. Beautiful blue. Clip me. Look at the venom on my boot. Check that out. Wow, he's a grumpy snake. Thing with these black snake, with the black snake family is they've got a lot of venom. You do not want to get bitten by one because they've got such a big quantity of venom. I wish he understood that I was trying to save his life, but he doesn't. He's got no concept of that. All he knows is that I'm trying to kill him and eat him, and that's not the case at all. We need to get you way back off the road, and with any luck, he's learned a lesson, and he'll never come back on it. There you go, mate. Okay. Now, don't come back this way. Uh-uh. Go that way. Get. Get. Oh! <laughs> Start to figure it out now. Wouldn't want to take a hit off the snake right now. That's nice though, nonetheless, you know. I love my snakes. Even though he wants to kill me, I saved his life. While I'm after me armpits and black snake, Terry spots a black snake sitting in a tree. Out this snake. Oh, she's beautiful. You're all right, baby. Man, she's this is the black headed python. Have a look at where she's been staying. She's probably living in this hollow log. The black headed seek out hollow logs, rock crevices, thick shrubs. This river system area is perfect for her with this ghost gum. Now she's just had her head out, peeking out, getting a little bit of warmth. It's slightly overcast today, so she'll use that dark, glossy head for picking up any rays of sun to help thermoregulate. She's a little bit cool, remarkably placid. She's not showing any aggression towards me at all, none whatsoever. Now this distinct black head it looks like she's been dipped into paint, but not only does it help her thermoregulate, she also uses it for hunting. Now she'll poke in and out of the rock crevices, both at night and during the day. And when it's a little bit dark, you can imagine how this black head would camouflage her completely from prey items. Now I'm just going to put her back in her hollow limb. Here you go. You want to go back in your log? There's a girl. Choice. This is excellent. That's a girl. Choice. See you later. We're heading due west, straight towards the guts of Australia. What we've got to do to see the wildlife and the sheer beauty of this land is to understand the intricate web of life and the food chain. Now have a look, have a look. It's all around us and yet it's very difficult for the untrained eye to see it. This is triodia, spinifex, harsh, prickly grass and it looks hostile and there doesn't look like there's much wildlife in it. However, if you look beyond the facade, you can see it. Triodia spinifex has been in Australia for a long time and it's a very tenacious, hard survivor. And when you look out into it, you think, yeah, can't really see anything. Well, what we got to do is cross over, uh, cross this road over to this patch. Lightning strike has hit this patch of spinifex and it's what I call a patch burn a relatively cool burn, and it's exposed one of the most important species in the area. 
termite. Have a look at these. You can see these big, crusty red mounds. These are termite mounds. And they're an ant-like species. There's over 360 species of termite here in Australia. They're found right across our great continent. And out here in the arid region, the termite has a very important role to play. The spinifex is the start of the food chain. The termites eat the spinifex. They cut it up into little chaff, store it in here, and in this one termite mound, you could have 50 to 100 kilos of spinifex. Right, so that supports the termites. Now imagine, in this one termite mound, there's enough termites to total about the same weight as a small cow. Which is interesting. Look across in this one patch of burnt spit effects and you can see termite mounds everywhere. If you look at that as an animal, what you're looking at is a small cow-like animal like a, an ancient animal that deprotoded on. Everywhere. Look how far, look how concentrated they are. They're everywhere. They're throughout the spin effects. And so the termites are the intricate part of the food chain. They are the start of the web. Here is the food source for lizards. Australia is the land of the lizards. Right here in this habitat, there's more lizards living in one area. There's more lizard density in this area than anywhere else in the world. And it starts right here in the termite mound. Coming up next, the second most venomous snake in the world. If you're off to the dunny, you better make it quick. There's more croc hunters coming up. This program is brought to you in part by Valvoline. You can always tell the guys who use Valvoline. Okay. Took care of the spark plugs, flushed the coolant, the brakes were shot, so I went ahead and took care of those. Greased and lubed it, cleaned out the injectors, replaced the air filter, the fuel filter, rotated the tires and changed the oil. Thanks, honey. More ASC certified master technicians, the top mechanics in the country, use Valvoline motor oil in their own cars over any other oil. Did you take out the garbage? Sure did. Separated bottles from cans. One of the bags was leaking, so I double bagged that. And uh, the roof's going to need some work. I can get to that next week. This month at Sonic, we found a whole new way to enjoy our chicken strips with our new chicken strip sandwiches. Tender strips of all-white meat chicken made with fresh lettuce, tomatoes, and cheese. Try yours today in delicious classic style or zesty spicy flavor. But hurry, they're here this month only. Lucy, she's my little girl, <laughs> but I have to take care of her too. Yeah, because I like to make sure that she eats healthy. You know, wholesome grains for energy and a shiny coat. Real beef for protein to help build strong muscles. Even vegetables with vitamins. She only thinks she's getting spoiled. Healthful, flavorful, beneficial. New beneficial brand by Purina. Up next on The Experience, Jeff journeys to Madagascar. Why do we move next to this power plant? It's the Jeff ah. Bowen Experience, coming up next on Animal Planet. If you think working at a zoo is easy, then check out the new season of Total Zoos. Animal Planet will give you an all-access look at the wilder side of the Smithsonian National Zoo. Join a team of keepers as they show you what it takes to handle over 475 species. You'll get a behind-the-scenes look at cutting-edge medical procedures and heartwarming scenes rarely shown to the public. You'll never look at a zoo the same way again. Don't miss the all-new season of Total Zoo, Tuesdays at 9, only on Animal Planet. This Tuesday, Animal Planet takes you to a place where the mission is to make certain our closest relatives don't become orphans of the forest. This Tuesday at 10, only on Animal Planet. Oh, more crocodile hunter coming up now. Billions of creatures below us, virtually invisible. They eat more vegetation than any other creature in Australia. And just as secretive as these voracious consumers are the other species they support further up the food chain. Oh, here we go. This is what I'm looking for. This is a skinch trap. Oh, look at him! 
Oh, look at this. What a little bluey. This is a blue tongue skink, a blue tongue lizard. And when he gets angry, he sticks his mouth open and he's got a big blue tongue. Blue tongues are one of the more common skinks in Australia. And this is what I call a centralian blue tongue. You can see that beautiful coloration, the orange bands on the brown and gray. That helps him blend into the spinifex. He's got the cutest little nose there. Look, he's got a little yellow nose. There's his blue tongue. Great eyes, and they've got that band coming back from their eyes. That's like a bandit to help camouflage. They'll sit in the spin effects and they'll wait. Any grasshoppers, insects, any invertebrates come along, whap, they'll grab it, chomp, chomp, chomp. Nice, big, strong jaws. Chew on it and swallow it down using their, their blue tongue to help force the food down. These guys are both insectivorous and herbivorous. They'll eat any of the flowers, those, those ephemeral flowers. They'll eat those, and insects just love them. And this is his house, in here in the spinifex. Watch this, he'll just cut straight through the spinifex, straight back home. Where you go, little fella. Notice the way he blends in there. Quick, 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 I'll get you. I'll get you. <laughs> Australia is the driest continent on the planet, but you don't appreciate what that really means until you move away from the coastal strip and head right into the center. After thousands of miles driving through country like this, the reality behind the word dry really sinks in. Every time I travel here, it amazes me how much life there is, but there's a real art to spotting it, and Eagle Eye Steve is sure to find some really interesting wildlife. The limiting factor on wildlife numbers is always food and water. The bird life multiplies in good seasons, and sometimes you'll see massive blocks of parrots building up when the grass of the dry country goes to seed. Heading to Uluru, there's mile after mile of endless flat plains. In territory like this, even a single tree would be a landmark. So when you reach the rocky escarpments, they're even more dramatic after the contrast of flat ground and red dust. There you can get the feel of those razorback rocks, the escarpments that just carve straight across the plain. These rugged peaks are all that's left of tall mountain ranges that were eroded down by many thousands of years of weathering. The process has been going on longer here than anywhere else. That's why there's so much flat country in Outback Australia. We've run out of road in this direction, so it's time for the four-wheel drive motorbike. I've spent all my life exploring and travelling this gorgeous red centre with my mum and dad. This place will always represent the ultimate sensation of freedom. And like the Aboriginal peoples that traversed this land on foot before me, my parents instilled in me that any tracks I leave, any habitat I disturb, should disappear in hours. My four-wheeler is an excellent vehicle to traverse the distances that would normally take days on foot. I live for this land and its wildlife. And here we go! This is exactly what I'm looking for! Just the glint of sun on scales is enough for Steve to spot a snake. Woo! Brown. The common brown. Here's an ear pearl. The common brown snake is the second most venomous snake in the world. They haven't got huge big fangs. They're relatively short. But by crikey, they've got toxic venom. Super toxic. And they're rodent specialists. What they'll do is locate rats and mice with their forked tongue, whack, hit, and venomate, swallow them down. At the moment, I couldn't touch him. There's absolutely no way I could put my hand anywhere on this snake. He tagged me before I could get my hand away quick enough. Beautiful animal, and he's a ruler. He's a predatory ruler out here. There wouldn't be an animal, a carnivore, a predator big enough to take him out. Um, let's see if I can just move him a bit. 
Come on, mate. Come on, buddy. Come on, buddy. Quick. These guys make me sweat. Make me sweat bullets. Come on, mate. Look at this, I'm shaking. Hang on. Come on, buddy. Come on, buddy. Oh, oh. Watch the way he carves through this grass. Oh, here he goes, here he goes, look out. Woo, they're quick, they slide through this grass like it's going out of fashion. Woo! He's got his neck flattened out. Come on, mate. Hup, hup, hup. Quick, whippy. Hey, hey. Hup. Oh, he's a nice specimen. What'd he be? Around about five feet in length. And he's on a mission. Just spread out a bit. Come on, mate. Very distinct orange spots on his belly. That picks a brown snake from any other species. Hey, hey, hey. Hey. Oh. Hey. They've got the bee ability to come back up over their own body, the brown snake. Really quick, hard, fast striking. Often repetitively striking. They are one of the sleekest animals out here. Really sleek. Move through this grass like fluid motion. Look at the shine coming off his head. Look at that. Beautiful animal. Oh, you're all right. Beautiful. This is the standard brown snake position. Going up into that S, they mean business. Deadly dangerous snake, not to be mucked with. You're all right, buddy. We've had enough of each other. I reckon it's time we just split up and leave him alone. Next, Steve comes face to face with one of the largest goannas in the world. You're watching the Crocodile Hunter. During our nation's tragedy, heroes arose. And in New York, the officers of the ASPCA, with the help of animal welfare groups, contributed in their own way. We're looking for any paw prints in the dust down there. Tomorrow night, see how they reunited local residents with the pets they were forced to abandon. I have my baby back. And gave critical medical care to injured rescue dogs. This is incredible. Don't miss the one-hour special event, Animal Precinct at Ground Zero. Tomorrow at 9 on Animal Planet. Tomorrow night, an all-new busted. It was a shocking but true case of road rage where a small dog was the victim. From the headlines to the manhunt, follow the amazing search for the culprit. It's an all-new episode of Busted. Tomorrow night at 10 on Animal Planet. Hi, I'm Billy Mays. If you're one of the millions of people who spend hundreds of dollars on pest control, this is the product for you. All you have to do is plug it into any outlet in your home. The Pest Patrol is the safest, the most effective way to rid your house of unwanted pests without using toxic chemicals that can make you or your family sick. The Pest Patrol uses electronic ultrasonic frequencies to drive pests such as mice, rats, bats, and squirrels, and other rodents out of your house, out of the living areas, and keeps them out. The Pest Patrol uses sweep sound technology that constantly fluctuates to create a hostile environment for pests in your home. To increase the power of the Pest Patrol, we are including an additional unit that will boost the protection in your home and help repel a variety of insects and more. The Pest Patrol is ETL listed and has earned the seal of approval from the National Home and Garden Club. And it's brought to you by Lentech International. As a respiratory therapist, I have treated several children with conditions related to chemical pesticide exposure. Utilizing the Pest Patrol, which is a chemical-free product, we can eliminate this needless exposure to our children. And after all, the children today are our future for tomorrow. 
If you have family members with allergies, small children, domestic pets, and not to worry, the Pest Patrol will not interfere with any electronic device you have in your home. Start using technology of the future right now. Each Pest Patrol comes with a 30-day satisfaction guarantee. But call in the next 10 minutes and we'll include a third Pest Patrol absolutely free. Here's how to order. Order your Pest Patrol today. Have your credit card ready and call this toll-free number now. Or send check or money order for $19.99 plus shipping and handling to the address on your screen. Remember, order in the next 10 minutes and you'll receive a third Pest Patrol absolutely free. Call now or order online at LentTech.com. Imagine, little girls born today never having to worry about breast cancer. It's more than a dream. Hi, I'm Juliana Marguerite. Join me in Discovery Health Channel and see how women today are taking charge, making choices, and living with breast cancer. And look ahead into the promising future of breast health. Breast Health. New Hope. Premieres Tuesday, October 16th, beginning at 8. Only on Discovery Health Channel. Now I know what you're wondering. You have an HDTV set. Now how do you get HDTV programming? Easy. With Time Warner Digital Cable. Time Warner has eight channels of high-definition programming available right now. Four channels of major networks, plus four channels of HBO and Showtime. If you want rich, vibrant HDTV programming, Time Warner Digital Cable is all you need. Check out HDTV today at Home Theater Store. Plan your holiday gathering at Kingfish Market and nobody goes home hungry. Choose from scrumptious buffets or sit down and enjoy an array of seafood and landlubber delights. Our staff will pamper any group from 10 to 500. And don't worry about everyone getting enough to eat because at a Kingfish Market holiday get-together, nobody goes home hungry. To book your holiday gathering, call Kingfish Market, 713-974-FISH. Watching the Crocodile Hunter. This vast desert may look completely devoid of life, but Steve has a gift, an uncanny ability to read nature, to be able to find animals even under rocks in the crevices of the ground where you'd least expect it. It's almost like the force. Ooh, look at this one. Mate. Look at the way he slides across the... Hey, hey! Woo! Here we go! He's gonna bite. He's like really grumpy now. Let me just see if I can grab him. Well, he's lively. He's rip... Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hey, hey, hey! No, nah, he's not stopping. He's big. He knows the venom he's got. I'm going to have to be so careful here. I can't afford to make a mistake out here. All I want to do is show you the beauty of this animal. He doesn't understand that. He thinks I want to kill him. Oh. Come on, mate. When he turns and faces me like that, that's danger. Extreme danger. He means business and he'll fight, no doubt about it. This is the fierce snake. The most venomous snake in the world. One of the most toxic animals on the face of the earth. And it's my job, it's my ambition to show you this snake. Not so you're scared, not so you fear this animal, but so you're passionate and enthusiastic about all of our wildlife. Come on, mate. He's settling down. He's settling down. My dad taught me from a very early age, be at one with the snake. Feel it, son. And I am. Woo! Okay, he's settled. I've got time. I've got time. I've made mistakes with fear snakes in my life. I've had them come up to my face. I've had them near bite me on the leg, near bite me on the hand. And it's been my fault. It's been my mistake every single step of the way. The trick to deal with venomous snakes, as I learnt at a very young age, He's given space. This is his territory. 
This is his terrain, his environment. He's the biggest predator out here. Nothing but nothing would touch this snake. Not even the biggest goanna. They would not have a go at an animal this size. Too big, venom just too potent. Woo, he's settling right down now. Isn't this wonderful? That initial rush when you come onto a fierce snake is awesome. But I just had to turn him, get him away, otherwise he would have bolted straight back down a hole and we wouldn't have been able to see him. And this is just such a special moment. This is what I want to share with you. Look at this beautiful animal. The most venomous snake in the world. Fascinating how Dad nurtured my instincts. He taught me if they can just feel that you mean them no harm, once you get your hands on them and you're gentle and caressing, then they'll just carry on like you weren't even there. Now this country's a little different. Stony ground, a few hills and rocky outcrops. Choice spot for a few Australian monitor lizards, the goannas. What we really want is a parenti, the giant goanna of the arid zone, the biggest lizard in Australia and one of the largest in the world. You really have to move to catch these guys. There's a thousand places to run and hide, and the one Steve spotted has disappeared. Life out here in the far western outback is like a giant learning curve. Even the lizard that avoids me, I learn. Once you get out of the sand, you don't see tracks. But what you do see is another very obvious sign of large predatory animals. And here it is. Look at this. This is exactly what I've got to keep an eye out for. This is a perenti poo. Woo! You can tell so much from a perenti poo. See this here? Look at this. That claw there, that's the claw of another goanna species. More claws. Fantastic. Look at the information that I can gather from this one poo. Incredible. How's this? King brown scales. Look at the size of them. These are dorsal scales. And they're big. Oh, here's a rib. There you go. That'll give you an idea of the size of the snake. Okay, so there's a rib, which is almost as fat as my finger, which means the snake would be almost as thick as two thumbs, which puts it out over five feet in length. Woo! This is a fair whack of a perenti that's done this poo. I've got to collect this. I've been working with perennies the majority of my life, and this is a part of my study area. On the escarpment. Check him out. Have a look at him. What a spectacular animal. The thing I've learnt many, many years ago is how keen their eyesight is. So what we'll have to do is I'm not going to look him right in the eye. Let's just see if we can sneak over. Just get over there. He's big enough that I won't represent a predator. As long as I don't look him in the eye, Keep my profile low, we should be able to get nice and close. Getting close to wildlife is an art form. He's on to me. I can see him tongue flicking and he's looking straight at me. Yep, he's on to me. He's curling his tail up. that I don't represent too much of a problem. He's starting to move away. I'm close enough. I'm getting real close. This is great. Here's the king. Here's the king of the outback. The largest predator out here. Have a look at his legs. Big, powerful legs. They can run across the escarpments, out into the sand dunes, and hit reptiles like they're going out of fashion. With all the poo that Terry and I have collected, 
we've noticed that they are virtually a reptile specialist. Have a look at this. Have a look on his back. Right there, look. Just there. You can see that cut, that laceration. That's from fighting with other male lizards. The other ones, have a look towards the base of his tail there. Just down there, look. You can see distinct fight marks. Oh, sorry mate. I overstepped it and he tail whipped me. Which is fair enough. You're all right, mate. You're all right. <laughs> this is his territory and his domain. And uh, if he wants to tail whip me, that's just fine. I just want to look at your scar tissue, buddy. He'd be around about five feet in length. These goannas are known to grow up and over eight feet in length. And in the old days, I used to think that they bite like a land crocodile. However, I've learnt, and only recently, that they don't. Even though they'll grab a reptile and lacerate it so hard and fast that a snake's dead in an instant, they don't bite people. If I try and touch him, he'll just tail with me. Here, mate. Just like that. Spectacular. Have a look. He's going home. Straight into his cave. Perfect. Ooh, you're hissing! How's the way he's turned and facing me? Listen to this. Are you upset? Are you upset? Isn't he cocky? Hasn't he got a sense of arrogance about him? They're an incredible animal. Woo! Yes, the Perendi. Largest predator out here, you little beaut. Next, some endangered mammal desert dwellers. Dragon poo. Smell that? Look, you're watching the crocodile hunter. Up next on The Experience. Check it out. Jeff journeys to Madagascar, the land that time forgot. Why do we move next to this power plant? No! It's the Jeff Corwin Experience, coming up next on Animal Planet. Introducing Chili's Baby Back Ribs. To go. I think it's going to be about a yard short. Bring it up fourth and one. Get in, get out, get on with your life. Wow, what's that? It's a shrink division. I made it by myself. Shrink innings are thin plastic material that shrinks up and hardens when you bake it. Shrink and ink shrink. Just color, cut, and bake. Colors deepen and grow more vibrant as they shrink. Use color pencils to color any design. Cut it out, punch holes as necessary, and bake in a preheated oven. Watching them shrink is half the fun. And best of all, there's no mess. We have everything. Bears, caterpillars, dinosaurs, and our mascot, Snorky the Dragon. Enough to make necklaces, refrigerator magnets, hair accessories, stand-ups, and more. Plus, bonus sheets. Trace your favorite character or make your own design. Shrink and Ink can be used to personalize all kinds of school stuff or anything else you can think of. And now, Shrink and Inks are for Christmas. For Christmas? That's right. Make baby's first ornament or your very own gift tag. You can make anything. Try earrings or luggage tags. Make a keychain for grandma or a license plate for that cute little roadster. Shrink and Inks are easy, simple, and fun. And we have a full line of art to choose from. Tanks and tigers, fairies and fantasy, dragons and dinosaurs, and our new Christmas art. Your set will include any art pack you choose, plus two bonus sheets, four clip-on keychains, elastic lacing, adhesive magnet material, 12 stand-ups, and a full set of 24 colored pencils, all for just $14.99. But wait! Call in the next 20 minutes and we'll add a $5 mail-in rebate. Your final cost is just $9.99. Shrink and Inks are the easiest, simplest, most inexpensive craft you've ever tried. Your kids will love them. Call now to order your Shrinky Dink kit. It's just $14.99 with a $5 mail-in rebate. Remember, you choose the art. Call 1-800-586-2236. That's 1-800-586-2236. 
At the Houston Cam Exchange, you can turn your old camera into cash. Or trade up for a nicer camera. Like the brand new Nikon Cool Picks 995 Digital. Get one and you'll never buy another roll of film. And check out the Nikon N80. It's the Nikon you've been waiting for. Now at an affordable price. We're the last real camera store. So why go anywhere else? Houston Camera Exchange, 5900 Richmond at Fountain View. Come to Texas Watch and Diamond and convert your loose diamonds, premium watches, and estate quality jewelry into instant cash. Don't go to a pawn shop. Don't run a classified ad. Come to Texas Watch and Diamond. We pay top dollar for Rolex, Patek Philippe, Cartier, and other premium watches. We pay top dollar for loose diamonds. Remember, before you sell, check our buy price. Texas Watch and Diamond, 5959 Westheimer Suite 10. We pay top dollar. The adventure continues. Ayers Rock is a huge monolith of rock in the middle of the red center. It is now known by its aboriginal name, Uluru. And to get there, we must endure some bone-shaking roads. Hell, these car and It's shaking the living daylight out of the vehicle. And it starts to slide sideways. They are extremely dangerous. You can't hit the brakes. We go sideways, grip, and flip onto your lift. A lot of vehicles come unglued in these corrugations. You just got to get a straight line, stick to it, and try and find a speed where your vehicle tracks nicely. These beautiful gorges are quite distinctive of the McDonald Ranges. These are ancient riverbeds. In fact, some of these riverbeds are the oldest river systems in the world, like the Fink River. And the Aborigines used to be able to get a drink here, as do some animals. This has to be one of the most gorgeous little reptiles in the entire Red Center. Have a look at this little beauty. It's got that really rapid tongue action, pulls them back into the mouth. Oh, look at that. She sits in that position on an ant trail. What? There he goes again and swallows them down. They only eat when their body temperature is about the right at warmth. Too cold, too hot, they'll go for the shade or they'll just sit and wait to warm up. You can see how tubby this little one is. Nice and fat, good condition. Brilliant condition. It's been good times. If the ants flourish, the thorny devils flourish. And what a weird and wonderful way to camouflage. See how thick and lush the grass is. There's lots of green pick coming through, which is excellent for all your macropod species. And have a look at these. Young eucalypts sprouting up. There's been water, and they've just been able to get a drink and shoot. The seeds will sit there dormant for quite a while, and then up they'll shoot. Oh, mate. Smell that. There's nothing quite like eucalyptus gum leaves. All of these young plants here, these young eucalypts, will probably die if they get into another severe drought. And you can see they have hardly been ravaged by insects. They're very healthy. Ah, oh, smell this one. Whew, beautiful. And have a look at this. Here's a big old timer, an absolute steamer of a gum tree, and it's chock-a-block full of hollows, old gnarly looking tree. Have a look at these ones jutting out here. Perfect habitat for a multitude of different species. You've got all of, all of your possums, of course. Large pythons will live in there. Birds, parrots, everything comes to these trees for a refuge because down inside, they can keep cool when it's hot and they can warm up when it's cold. And look at this. She's a big old gnarly tree. Beautiful. Night time's mammal time. And uh, we're planning on seeing a few mammals. 
This is an absolute hot spot. I'll meet you out there, mate. Okay. See you there. Tracks are the best guide to mammal activity. And we've already got some fresh tracks happening. It's just coming on dark. In a few minutes, it's going to be completely black. And at that stage, we should be able to pick up some eye shine. Something just ducked straight under that chunk of spinner bags. I think it was a kawari. that they don't detect my vibration. And when they hunt, they're flat out like a lizard drinking. They're alert and they're quick, real quick. The Kawari is a Dazzy Urid. The biggest Dazzy Urid in Australia is the Tasmanian Devil, followed by the Quolls. So they're like a miniature Quoll. They're a pouched, carnivorous, or in the Kawari's case, in mainly insectivorous, marsupial. They'll have around six young, which will hang on their teeth. Very rarely seen for two reasons. One, you can see how quick they are, and it requires a knowledge of how to stalk, how to use your light to be able to see them. But two, is they're endangered. They are in a lot of trouble. We're in one of the few isolated pockets left. That was great. Australia's arid zone species are in great danger of extinction. In fact, introduced feral pests like foxes, cats, goats, unnatural burning, overgrazing, habitat destruction have all taken their toll on the red centre. There's already been a lot of extinctions, like the lesser bilby. We've got to look after what's left. We have to be incredibly careful spotlighting. Some animals run and others just sit. We're very conscious of nocturnal animals' tolerance of light. It's a marla. I think it's sea steam. our destination and meet the king. Danger, danger, danger. You're watching the Crocodile Hunter on Animal Planet. Working at a zoo may seem easy, but after the new season of Total Zoo, you'll never look at one the same way again. Get an all-access look at the Smithsonian National Zoo on the new season of Total Zoo. Tuesdays at 9 on Animal Planet. This Tuesday... Animal Planet takes you to a place where the mission is to make certain our closest relatives don't become orphans of the forest. This Tuesday at 10, only on Animal Planet. Wake up to new Hot Pockets brand breakfast. Real scrambled eggs, cheese, bacon or sausage, and a crispy, buttery Hot Pockets crust. Wake up to a new hot, hearty breakfast from Hot Pockets. Find the new breakfast flavors next to Hot Pockets.
Are you ready, people? It's showtime. The biggest toy store in the world is coming to Times Square November 17th. The new Toys R Us. We're ready. Are you? Nice job, Jeffrey. Yeah, sorry I was a little late. I hit traffic in Cleveland. Come on, let's go out the Ferris wheel. Oh, I don't know. I'm a little afraid of heights. Yeah, yeah. Actually, I'm close to the bovine family. Are you? Time Warner Cable beats the satellite dish to the internet with Roadrunner, the fastest online service. We get Roadrunner High Speed Online from Time Warner Cable and we love it. It's really fast and easy to use. With Roadrunner, I never have to dial up. I'm always connected so I can be on the web instantly. Roadrunner doesn't tie up my phone, so I can be surfing the internet and talking with my friends on the phone at the same time. Try getting that from a satellite company. <laughs> time Warner Cable, the very best in TV, keeps getting better. Zero interest for up to two full years. Only one furniture store brings you this finance offer. It's Fingers Design, Expo, and Sale. Now save 23 to 54% on every item in Houston's largest furniture selection, including exclusive new introductions you won't find anywhere else. And with zero interest for up to two full years, there's never been a better time to buy. Come see what's new and save on everything. The Design, Expo, and Sale is at your fingers. Jim, the crocodile hunter. Hey. Woo! Have a look at this. What a steam. Come on, mate. Have a look at this. King Brown. And it's a ripper, too. They don't get much bigger than this. It's a steamer. Has to be nearly seven feet. Actually, they do get a little bigger than this. This is about as big and chunky as I've ever seen them. And it's a beauty. Look at the shimmer, the sheen. Beautiful coloration. And look at the tracks he's making in the sand. He's up here catching the last part of the sun. Let's get down there into the spin effects. Back down to his home. The King Brown is actually a member of the black snake family. Any of these dull brown snakes that we're going to be finding throughout the red centre should be considered as dangerous. Normally the King Brown flattens his neck out and has a few strikes. This one's big enough to know the power that he's got. And he's not that worried about me. I'm just kind of at one with him, letting him slide through my hands. Look at the tracks he's making here, look at this. With his, with his belly scales. And you can see how fat he is. Being a member of the black snake family, as far as Benham's concerned, he's not in the top ten. But have a look at this. Woo! He's got a big head. Big venom glands. And the King Brown has a lot of venom. It's pretty toxic. You take a big hit off this, and they're going to whack a lot of venom in. And the thing with the King Brown and other black snakes is the bite gets necrotic. It starts to rot. What a champion. Let's just let him go. Let him go on his way. going straight for the spin effect. He knows where he wants to go. The last stage of our journey, and we move into the heart of the red center. Ayers Rock, or Uluru, rising dramatically out of the plains.
we see the people going up the climb there, they look like ants. Some people feel the need to climb this giant rock, but it really is a moving, spiritual experience just to be in its presence. Interesting how the Aborigines, the traditional owners, they prefer it if no one went on the climb. It's in the afternoon that you really get to appreciate the changing moods of Uluru. As it changes its mood, it changes its colour. I love this land, its people, and our wildlife, and we're committed to the protection and the enthusiasm of conservation of this land we call Australia. Our journey to the red centre, the spiritual heart and soul of the oldest landscape on earth. Stay with us, we'll be back. Ooh, the Crocodile Hunter will be right back after this break. Tomorrow night, as Croctober continues, whack! Not all crocs are created equal. Ooh, they're wild. In freshwater, you find a different kind. They're so cute, you want to squeeze their cheeks. Trouble is, they'll bite you. These crocs are looking for water. By crock, it's dry. And Steve's looking for them. Straight up here. Look out! Croctober continues tomorrow night at 8. Woohoo! Only on Animal Planet. Look at this workmanship. Could make a lot of lira selling these in New York. Yeah, look at these prices. These guys don't know what they got. They're clueless. Try asking the old guy if he can handle a production of 10,000 of these. No problem, senora. What did it say? They have 2 million units warehoused in New Jersey. New Jersey? New Jersey. New Jersey. The right infrastructure can take your business anywhere. Even New Jersey. Bye-bye. This month at Sonic, we found a whole new way to enjoy our chicken strips with our new chicken strip sandwiches. Tender strips of all-white meat chicken made with fresh lettuce, tomatoes, and cheese. Try yours today in delicious classic style or zesty spicy flavor. But hurry, they're here this month only. Anything in the mail? Oh, junk. Hey, look at this. What? My credit card pre-approved. You know what that is. We already have a credit card. But it's pre-approved. What do you want? A trip to Bermuda? The Cayman? Yeah. Using credit wisely is the first step toward owning a home. Call for the free guide on credit from the Fannie Mae Foundation and for a list of lenders and credit counselors. Tomorrow night, an all-new busted. It was a shocking but true case of road rage where a small dog was the victim. From the headlines to the manhunt, follow the amazing search for the culprit. It's an all-new episode of Busted, tomorrow night at 10 on Animal Planet. Up next on The Experience, Jeff journeys to Madagascar. Why do we move next to this power plant? It's the Jeff yeah. Corwin Experience, coming up next on Animal Planet. For thousands of years, the Aborigines have passed down their knowledge of the land. And now, it's my turn to pass on my parents' knowledge to my family and you. Nothing get any redder than this. Ha! <laughs> and so, we've gone straight into the guts of Australia to look at the arid interior. We found out firsthand why, for some 30,000 years, the Aborigines have treasured this wide red earth that we call Australia. And we hope to preserve it for generations to come. The Red Santa Rule! You're on Animal Planet. Sit. Stay. Oh, hi there. I'm Jeff Corwin. We're presently 250 miles off the East Coast.